What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to figure out if two lines are parallel or not, okay? So we're gonna do a few different types of problems, but first, we're gonna make sure you understand what these angle pairs are, okay? I did another video kind of introducing this and going over this a lot more in depth, but I'm gonna go over them kind of quick here so you at least have an idea of what they are, okay? So first of all, let's start with corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are just angles that are in similar positions. Okay, so here you can see that angle one is basically like in the top left of this little cross up here, and five is also in the top left of this little cross right here, okay? So angle one and five are corresponding angles, okay? Same thing, four is in the bottom right, eight is in the bottom right. So four and eight are corresponding angles, okay? Now, if your two lines right here are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent, okay? And congruent just means that they have the same angle measure, okay? So if these two lines right here are parallel, we can say that angle one and angle five are congruent, okay? So if angle one right here is 100 degrees, we can also say that angle five over here is 100 degrees, okay? Same thing, if we say angle two is 80 degrees, then we can say angle six right here is also 80 degrees, right? So those are corresponding angles. Okay, now what are alternate exterior angles? All right, well, one way I like to think about this is you can think about your parallel lines right here as a sandwich, okay? Th these are kind of like the bread of your sandwich. And everything between your parallel lines is the inside of the sandwich, right? This is where all the goodies are. Okay, so that means all the angles in here, so three, four, five, and six, those are your interior angles. Okay, so whatever's outside of your sandwich are your exterior angles. So that would be one, two, seven, and eight. Okay, now if we're talking about alternate exterior angles, we're just talking about on alternate sides of this transversal right here. Okay, so here, one and eight would be alternate exterior angles, and two and seven would also be alternate exterior angles. Okay. And again, if your two lines right here are parallel, then we can say that these are congruent, okay? So one and eight would be congruent and two and seven would be congruent, okay? Now, what are alternate interior angles? Well, again, we're talking about the inside of your sandwich, right, in between your parallel lines. So the interior angles are these, three, four, five, and six. And again, alternate sides of this transversal, okay? So three and six are alternate interior and four and five are also alternate interior, okay? So again, if your two lines here are parallel, then we can say that these are congruent, right? So three and six would be congruent, and four and five would be congruent, right? Now, lastly, we have consecutive interior angles, and again, we have this word interior, okay? So we're talking about three, four, five, and six, okay? But this time, we're talking about consecutive. So this time, we're talking about angles that are on the same side of this transversal line, okay? So here, consecutive interior angles would be four and six, and the other pair would be three and five, okay? And these are not congruent, these are supplementary. And remember, supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees, right? So for example, if angle four right here was 100 degrees, that means angle six right here would be 80 degrees, okay? And same thing, if angle five over here was 100 degrees, that means angle three would have to be 80 degrees. Okay, so you can see these add up to 180 and these add up to 180. Okay, so all of these relationships hold up only if your two lines right here are actually parallel, okay? So with that in mind, let's jump into this first example right here. So this problem says, find the value of x that makes m and n parallel, or m parallel to n, okay? So here it gives us two angles, right? It gives us 120 degrees right here and 3x degrees right here, right? So we're trying to solve for x. Well, the first thing that we can see here is that these are corresponding angles, right? This is in the bottom left of our little cross right here, and this is in the bottom left of our little cross right here. Okay, so in order for these two lines to be parallel, then these two angles have to be the exact same, right? So this one has to be 120 degrees, and this one has to be equal to 120 degrees, okay? So in order to solve for x, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set 3x is equal to 120, okay? So here, 3x is equal to 120, okay? So to solve for x, we'll divide both sides by three, okay? These threes cancel out, so we get x is equal to 120 divided by three, which is equal to 40. Okay, so here, x is equal to 40. 
All right, here's the next problem. So this one says, find the value of x that makes m parallel to n. Okay, so as you can see, these two angles right here, they're, in, they're both interior angles, right? They're both on the inside of our sandwich here, and they're both on the same side of the transversal. So that means these are consecutive interior angles. And consecutive interior angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so when I add up 150 and this one, they should add up to 180 degrees, right? So if this is 150 degrees, that means this angle right here has to be equal to 30 degrees, right? So then this is the little equation we're going to use to solve for x. So we're going to have 3x minus 15 is equal to 30, okay? So here we'll add 15 to both sides, okay? These cancel out, so then we get 3x is equal to 30 plus 15, which is 45, okay? Divide both sides by three, those cancel out. So then we get x is equal to 45 divided by three, which is equal to 15, okay? So then here, x is equal to 15. All right, here's the next one. So find the value of x that makes m parallel to n. Okay, so again, these are our parallel lines, right? So everything in between our parallel lines is the interior, right? This is the inside of our sandwich. So that means these two angles out here are on the exterior. And as you can see, they're both on opposite sides of this transversal line. So that means these are alternate exterior angles, okay? And alternate exterior angles are congruent, right? They have the same angle measured. They're equal to each other. So we can say that this angle right here is equal to this angle right here. So we can say 180 minus x is equal to this angle right here, x, okay? So again, we're trying to solve for x, right? So let's move all the x's to the same side. So here, let's add x to both sides, all right? So then here they cancel out. So we get 180 is equal to x plus x, which is equal to 2x, okay? So then here we'll divide both sides by two. Boom, these cancel out. So 180 divided by two is equal to 90. All right, so 90 is equal to x. All right, now we're gonna switch it up a bit. So this one says, decide whether there's enough information to prove m is parallel to n. Okay, so is there enough information here to say that these two lines are parallel? Well, here it's telling us that these two angles are congruent, okay? So do these two angles have any type of relationship to each other? Do they have any significant relationship? Well, they do, right? Because remember, the space between your parallel lines is the interior, right? This is all the interior. So here we can see that they are, and also they're on opposite sides of the transversal, right? So here, these are alternate interior angles, okay? And if alternate interior angles are congruent, then that means your two lines right here are parallel, okay? So we can say, hell yes, these are definitely parallel to each other. All right, next one. So again, we're trying to figure out if there's enough information to say that these two lines right here are parallel. Okay, so remember this is the space inside your sandwich, right? This is the interior angles. So here it's telling us that these two exterior angles are congruent, okay? So, and as you can see, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, right? So since these two angles right here, these two alternate exterior angles are congruent, then again, we can say that Hell yes, M and N are parallel. Okay, so again, we're gonna try and figure out if these two lines are parallel, okay? So remember, the space between your parallel lines is the interior, right? So here we have one interior angle and one exterior angle, okay? Did we go over any theorems or angle pairs that relate these two angles right here? No, we did not, okay? Because first of all, this angle right here, so let's talk about corresponding, right? We went over four different ones. So what corresponds to this angle right here? Well, that would be this one over here, okay? So that's not it. We also went over alternate interior angles, okay? So this is an interior angle, and the alternate interior angle to this one would be this one right here, okay? So again, that's not it. We also went over alternate exterior angles. So what would be the alternate exterior angle to this one? Well, it would be this angle right there, okay? So that's not it. And lastly, we went over consecutive interior angles, right? So those are interior angles on the same side of this transversal right here, okay? So again, that would be this one, but that's obviously not where this one is. All right, so 
these don't match up with any of the theorems that we went over. Okay, so is there enough information to say that these two lines are parallel? Hell no. Okay, so again, we're going to try and figure out if these two lines, M and N, are parallel. All right, and it's telling us that these two angles right here are congruent. Okay, so again, these two congruent angles right here, they don't match up with anything, any of the theorems that we went over, right? And also, it doesn't tell us any information about this line right here, N, right? It only tells us about these two angles, and they're both related to angle, or sorry, to line M right here, right? We don't know a single thing about line N right here, okay? So there's definitely not enough information to prove that these two bad boys right here are parallel. Okay, so again, we're gonna try and figure out if M and N are parallel lines, okay? And it's telling us that these two lines right here are congruent, okay? So remember, the space between your parallel lines right here is the interior, right? So then these two angles are on the exterior, okay? And they're on opposite sides of this transversal. So that means these two lines right here are alternate exterior angles, okay? So if it's telling us that these two alternate exterior angles are congruent, then we know, since that's one of our angle pairs, right, one of our theorems, that these two lines right here are parallel. All right, here's the last type of problem we're going to go over. So this one says, are lines AC and DF parallel? All right, so these two lines right here. Okay, so one angle pair that I didn't mention earlier, but you should probably be familiar with, are supplementary angles. And those are just two angles that add up to 180 degrees, right? And you'll normally find them along a line, okay? So for example, here, it gives us 57 degrees. So here, we know this is 57 degrees. So what must this angle be right here? Well, it would be 180 minus 57. So this right here would be 123 degrees, okay? Now, if you notice something, we know this angle and this angle, right? And what relationship do these have? Well, they're alternate exterior angles, and they are congruent, right? Because they have the exact same angle measure, right? They're both 123 degrees, okay? So since we have alternate exterior angles that are congruent, then that means these two lines right here are parallel. All right, so again, we're gonna try and figure out if AC and DF are parallel, okay? So again, one thing we can see here is that it gives us 37 degrees for this angle measure right here, right? So what must this angle be right here? Because these two angles, this one and this one right here, are supplementary, right? So this angle right here, again, 180 minus 37 would be equal to 143 degrees, okay? Now you can see that we have corresponding angles, right? So this one is in the top right of our little cross right here, and this one is in the top right of our little cross right here. So since we have two corresponding angles that are congruent, then that means these two lines right here, AC and DF, are definitely parallel. Okay, so again, we're trying to figure out if AC and DF are parallel, okay? So here it's telling us that these two angles are congruent, right? They're both 62 degrees. But here we don't have enough information to relate this line AC to DF, okay? Because even if we use supplementary angles, well, we could fill in the blanks up here, right? So if it's giving us 62, then this angle right here would be 180 minus 62, so that'd be 118 degrees, okay? And we could also say we have 118 degrees right here, right, based on supplementary angles also, okay? But as you can see, there's nothing we can take from these angles to relate to these angles over here, right? All the information it gives us is simply over this line right here. We don't have any information over this line right here, okay? So in this case, are AC and DF parallel? Who the hell knows? But in this case, I'm gonna say no, because we don't have enough information to prove that. Okay, so again, we're trying to figure out if AC and DF are parallel, these two lines right here, okay? So one thing we can do here, again, is use supplementary angles, all right? So here, it gives us 115 degrees, so then that means this angle right here, its supplement should be 65 degrees, okay? Now let's, again, use supplementary angles. So the supplement to this angle right here, 65, would be on this side, and it would be 115 degrees. Okay, so now if you notice, we just found one of our four theorems, right? 
So these two angles right here, 65 and 115, they are consecutive interior angles, right? They're both interior angles and they're on the same side of this transversal right here, okay? And remember, consecutive interior angles are supposed to add up to 180 degrees. So does 65 plus 115 add up to 180 degrees? Yes, it does, okay? So that means AC and DF are parallel because we have some consecutive interior angles right there. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.